In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Pi Cycle Top Indicator for Bitcoin, talking about this bearish crossover that's incoming in a lot more detail. We'll be breaking it down into different price points. We'll be extrapolating where could Bitcoin potentially top in the bull market. And we'll be also talking about the reaccumulation range and how that ties into the bull market peak. So lots to talk about. Let's talk about the Pi Cycle Top Indicator in a lot more detail. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Like this video if you enjoy content like this going forward and let's dive right into it. So this is the Pi Cycle Top Indicator and you can see that the green and orange moving averages are really important in denoting a bull market peak. It's one of the most reliable and pre predictive indicators when it comes to predicting a bull market peak for Bitcoin. It's done so quite accurately many times in the past and it'll probably do the same thing in this cycle as well. So we're not quite yet close to that bearish crossover but nonetheless it's always worth noting that this is a crossover that's going to occur in the future so frequent updates are really quite important. But when we talk about each of these two moving averages, this green moving average, for instance, is now causing a period of consolidation, which makes sense because we're in a reaccumulation phase going into the halving. That's historically been the case around the halving event. And this green moving average causing a consolidation has happened before in the past in the previous bull market in 2020, 2021. So this is an out of the ordinary price action that we're seeing in 2017, actually, we'd see actually regular and frequent rejections from this moving average. However, it does look like this is a rejection point that is prompting a reaccumulation phase going into the halving. So downside from here, there is scope for limited downside or at the very least, there's not a lot of downside left on this pullback. Generally, we're in a reaccumulation phase and having seen an 18% pullback already, not much downside left to go, but this 350 day moving average multiplied by two, the screen moving average, that's around 77K. So that's currently the moving average that is rejecting price. Notice how it's a dynamic moving average. So 77K is where this moving average is representing price, but back in early March, mid-March, we saw that this green moving average was at a lower price, so representing a lower price. But this is essentially going to be that major resistance that Bitcoin needs to break in the future. And 55K is this orange moving average, this pie cycle moving average. And if we look to this chart here, any support test of the orange moving average is a bargain buying opportunity. You can see that across the 2017 cycle as well. So if we get that by some luck, then 55K is where we should probably be looking. So if I mentioned that we have limited downside from here, getting to 55K, if that were to be the case, then that's fantastic. But having said that we have a 18% pullback already and 23% is the most we've seen in this cycle, we could get closer at best. At best, if we were to see a bit more downside, at best we could get closer to 55K, this orange moving average, but not actually touch it. But let's talk about these moving averages and propagating them into the future to better understand where could the bull market peak take place. And based on current prices, that would get us to around April 2025. And what's interesting about this is that this general period, this reaccumulation period and this slowing down in the upside momentum is really facilitating a slowing down in when we could potentially anticipate a bull market peak. In previous updates, we were in an uptrend. So we were probably somewhere here which meant that we were going to see a bull market peak in 2024, which was very much in line with accelerated cycle theory. But the fact that we're seeing slowing down in this moment in time is actually giving this cycle a bit more time to mature. And as a result, it's prolonging the cycle. So it's becoming less of an accelerated cycle. But as you can see, any price change is going to impact this bearish crossover into the future. And I did this for two prices. So 63,800 and earlier today, I actually looked also when price was at 61,900. And you can see that this is only a th almost 3% 
difference in price, but you can see that 62K, when price was hit, the bearish crossover was suggesting that it would occur in late July. So price only rallied almost 3% towards the upside, so approximately $2,000, but it pushed back the bearish crossover by three months. And isn't that just interesting to see in real time how just a small price increase can really impact the bearish crossover for this pi cycle moving average indicator quite substantially. So continued consolidation and, and even continued pulling back is going to simply push back the can down the road. It's going to push back this bull market peak further and further into the future. So if we were to retrace an additional two or three percent, then that's going to push price or at least the bearish crossover by additional three months into the future. So if we were actually to lose the 6,600, so $60,600 support and pull back a bit deeper, then that would even push things back even more into the future when it comes to this bearish crossover. And I just want to talk about how you know, a July or April bull market peak ties in with historical cyclicality. Because historically, after the halving, we tend to see a bull market peak 518 days after the halving or 546 days after the halving. So if this were to repeat in the future, that would get us to mid-September or mid-October 2025. So it's interesting to see how a July or April 2025 uh, bearish crossover were to occur, this would tie in more closely to these halving cycles repeating. So essentially no accelerated cycle, although maybe slightly accelerated. I mean, if we were to continue to pull back from here, go to 62K or even go lower, then that would push things back into July, August, maybe even September for a bearish crossover on the Pi Cycle Top Indicator. But the fact is that the more we consolidate and pull back at this point in time in the cycle, that's going to tie in more and more with this essential chart repeating in the future. So if we were to see a July or April a bearish crossover, then the bull market peak would be a little bit earlier than the proposed September, October 2025 uh, halving cycle theory, but only slightly ahead of time. So that would be a slightly accelerated cycle because we're in a in an accelerated cycle at the moment, but we are slowing down because of this reaccumulation area. And notice how the fact that we're reaccumulating and just moving sideways at the old all-time high region, which is this black horizontal here, this consolidation, this reaccumulation here is tying in with the reaccumulation that we're actually seeing at this green moving average. The top, that, that green pi cycle moving average, we're seeing that happen here in a very similar manner to the reaccumulation phase that we saw just below this green moving average in 2021 as well. So this reaccumulation is only a reflection of what we've seen in the past. And that is around old all time highs, Bitcoin tends to 2013, it managed to break quite comfortably, but it tends to, around old all-time highs, once revisiting them, it tends to experience quite a lot of upside and downside volatility. We've seen that across cycles, we're seeing that right now. So the fact that we're seeing reaccumulation around here take place and take time, that's actually a good thing for the cycle because it means that this currently accelerated cycle is slowing down a bit and getting a bit more resynchronized with what we've seen in the past in terms of these halving cycles. But the fact that we're also seeing this reaccumulation phase occur right now, that's also in line with what we've seen in the cycles. So this dark blue circle right over here, that's a pre-halving retrace that tends to occur around the halving event. So the fact that we're seeing this pre-halving retrace occur right now isn't out of the ordinary, but it is really interesting that we're seeing that triple confluence. So the pre-halving retrace around the halving event, we're also seeing the confluence of price rejecting from old all-time highs, just like we've seen many times in the past. So that's the second confluence. And the third confluence, of course, is the Pi cycle moving average, which is prompting this reaccumulation phase as well. So 
triple confluence there in terms of this reaccumulation phase and it would be a mistake to think that the bull market is over because historically we tend to still see lots of upside in the post halving period and even the bearish crossover is for the price cycle top indicator showcasing that we're still quite a way away from a bull market peak whether it's april whether it's july that's going to be changing in terms of these fluctuations in price action in the short term but the more we consolidate here as we have been doing and the more we even retrace even if it's a little bit more that's going to be quite healthy for a bull market peak because it would mean that that bull market peak would have more time to occur we'd have a longer cycle and one that's more in line with the halving cycles that we've seen historically in the past. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the video in the top right hand corner for more. Subscribe to the channel and like this video for more content going forward. I'm Rick Capital. Thank you so much for watching. Speak to you soon.